Hi and welcome to Angles in Triangles and Quadrilaterals. Just before we start, a reminder that there is a notes chatter available for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. So we're going to begin with the angles in a triangle. And what I've done here is I've made myself a triangle and I'm just going to break this triangle up so that all I have are the three angles which are forming that shape. So here is one of my angles and here's another and here's another and all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to rotate these around so that they all are meeting at the same point so here is one and we'll rotate this one so that it matches up and we can bring them all together in the same place and our final angle bring this one in and rotate it so that it is matching and now all three of my angles have met at a single point and when I've done that what has actually been formed is a straight line now if you've seen my previous video on angles uh, angle rules uh, you'll know that angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees and that tells us that the angles in a triangle also must add up to 180 degrees and so that is our rules. Angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so let's see if we can use that rule in order to find the missing pink angles in each of these triangles. My first one is a right angle triangle. And I can tell that because it's got this little square in the corner. That is telling me it's got a right angle. And that is telling me it's 90 degrees. Now we've just said that the angles in a triangle must add up to 180 so the first thing I'm going to do is add together the two angles which I already know. So 60 plus 90 is 150 degrees. The missing angle, well that will be 180 take away 150. And if I do that, 0 take away 0 is 0, 8 take away 5 is 3, and 1 take away 1 is 0. So this last angle must be 30 degrees. In the next one, same thing, I've got a 35 degree angle and a 40 degree angle. So the first thing I'm going to do is 35 plus 40. And that gives me 75 degrees. In order to find the missing angle, I'm going to subtract that from 180. So that's 185 take away, seven, uh, sorry, 180 take away 75. And so I'm going to have to borrow. And that leaves me with 105. And so the angle here would be 105 degrees. The last one, we have a 26 degree angle and a 119 degree angle. So the first thing I need to do here is add those two numbers together. So 6 plus 9 is 15. 1 plus 1 plus 2 is 4. And the 1, so that's 145. If I want to find the missing angle, I'm going to subtract that from 180. And so we get 10 take away 5 is 5, 7 take away 4 is 3, and 1 take away 1 is 0. So our last angle would be 35 degrees. So next we're going to look at quadrilaterals. So any shape with four straight sides. What can we say about the angles of this shape? Well, again, all I'm going to do is I'm going to separate this out so that it is just the angles that are involved and we're going to bring each of these together so that they meet again so all of the angles meeting at the same point and so let's just rotate this around until it does that and there we go there's our first two angles now we can see straight away this isn't going to be a straight line because we've already gone beyond 180 degrees let's rotate this one pop it together and there we go and our last angle bring that one in just needs a slight rotation and there we go we put them all together now all of these angles have met at a single point and again if you've seen that previous video you'll know that when angles meet at a point they will add up to 360 degrees and so that is exactly the same for all of the angles in a quadrilateral too. So the rule is that angles in a quadrilateral add up to 360 degrees. 
So let's see if we can use that rule in order to find the missing angles in these quadrilaterals. So, first things first, we have three angles that we know, 45 degrees, 130 degrees and 80 degrees. So we're going to have to add each of those together first to see what we have already. So 130 plus 80 plus 45. Add them together, I get 5. 3 plus 8 is 11, plus 4 is 15. And 1 plus 1 is 2, so 255 degrees. In order to get the missing angle, I'm going to have to subtract that from 360. So 360 take away 255, that gives me 105 degrees. And so my missing angle is 105 degrees. The next one is, a, uh, is what is known as a delta, or it's a form of a delta shape. Um, and we've got a 30 degree angle, a 40 degree angle, and a 70 degree angle. And so the first thing I'm going to do here is again add those three values together. And if I add them, I get 7 plus 4 is 11, plus 3 is 14, so 140 degrees. Now if I wanted to get the missing angle, I would have to subtract that 140 from 360 degrees. And if I do that, I get 220 degrees. Now, what you can see here is because this is a large angle, this is actually a reflex angle. It's beyond 180 degrees. And therefore, that 220 that we've just worked out must be correct because it is larger than 180. And finally, we have a 150 degree angle with a 40 degree angle and a 120 degree angle. I'm just going to add each of those together in order to find out what we have in total so far. So 5 plus 2 is 7, plus 4 is 11. And so 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 300, so 310. If I want to find the missing angle, well, I'm going to do 360 take away 310. And that leaves me with 50. And so the missing angle here would be 50 degrees. And so lastly, we're just going to look at a, a couple of um, specific types of triangles and quadrilaterals because they have some special features with their angles. And so the first one we're going to look at is the equilateral triangle. And an equilateral triangle is shown by having all three sides with the same little dash on it, meaning that all three sides are the same length. But what it also means is that all of the angles are equal. And as the angles in a triangle add up to 180, that means each of them must be 60 degrees. The next type of triangle is one where we have two sides which are the same length. Now, if it has two sides the same length, that is an isosceles triangle. And the rule with the angles is that the base angles are equal. Now, what that means is the two angles, which are the base of the sides which are the same length. And so the triangle may be uh, drawn in a slightly different um, orientation, um, but as long as you are looking at the two angles at the bottom of the um, lengths which are the same, then you will find the two angles which are the same. Next, I'm looking at a parallelogram. Um, and it's a parallelogram because we have two pairs of parallel sides. Um, now, there are special forms of parallelograms. A rhombus is a very special type as it is a parallelogram where all of the sides are equal. But also things like rectangles and squares are special types of parallelograms because they include two pairs of parallel sides. But the rules would apply for all of those shapes. So the first thing I want to look at is um, with parallelogram that the opposite angles are equal. So the two angles that I have colored in green here are opposite to each other and they are the same size. The two that I have colored in purple are opposite each other and they are equal. And so opposite angles in a parallelogram will always be equal. And lastly, if we look at the two angles um, which are um, within each other, they are called core interior angles. And so that is the green and the pink uh, put together. They will add up to 180 degrees. And that is the same at the top. So those two angles would add up to 180. It's the same here as well. They would add to 180. And it's the same here. 
they would add up to 180 as well. So any pair of angles which are next to each other within a parallelogram will add up to 180 degrees. And so for our final question, we're going to look at applying all of the different rules that we've looked at so far. So we're told that line AB is the same length as AC. Calculate the size of the green angle, giving reasons for your answer. So the first thing we need to look at here is that we've just been told that the line AB is the same length as the line AC. Now, if we look at this, we have a triangle, ABC. And that is telling us that we have an isosceles triangle because we have two sides which are the same length. Now, our rule for an isosceles triangle was that base angles are equal. So base angles in an isosceles triangle are equal. So what we can do is we can work out angle ACB and angle ABC. So angle ACB equals angle ABC. And we can work out the size of it by thinking about the angles in a triangle. The angles in a triangle must be 180 degrees in total. So if we take away the angle which was at the top, 180 take away 40 equals 140 degrees. Now, because this is an isosceles triangle, we know that the other two angles must be equal to each other, and therefore this 140 must be shared equally. And so all we need to do is half that value. And so each of those angles must be 70 degrees. So angle ACB and angle A. BC equals 70 degrees and the reason that we must give is that base angles in an isosceles triangle are equal. So that is our first step. We've managed to find that this angle is 70 and this angle is 70. Now, with uh, the diagram, what we need to think about is what else have we got? What information do we know? Well, we know that this angle here is 80 degrees. If we have a quick look, we can see that DE is a straight line. And so as it is a straight line, we know that the angles on a straight line must add up to 180 degrees. And therefore, the angle here must equal uh, must be uh, must make up 180 degrees with the 80. So 180 take away 80 equals 100 degrees, and therefore this angle must be 100 degrees. And so our rule here is that angles on a straight line add to 180 degrees and then finally if we have a look at what we have here well we now have three out of four angles within a quadrilateral and so we can add together 100 plus 70 plus 70 and that gives me 240 degrees and so in order to find the missing angle the one we actually wanted to know well, we just do 360, take away 240, which is 120 degrees. And we give our reason that angles in a quadrilateral add up to 100, uh, sorry, to 360 degrees and so we've calculated the missing angle we wanted is 120 degrees and so we're going to end with the exam question and this came from the edxl paper in november 2017 and it was on both the foundation and higher paper one um, so we were given that abcd is a parallelogram and edc is a straight line f is the point on ad so that BFE is a straight line 
angle EFD equals 35 degrees, angle DCB equals 75 degrees, show that angle ABF equals 70 degrees. Give a reason for each stage of your working. So the very first thing I'm actually going to do here is just mark which of the angles it is that I'm looking for. So ABF means that I start at A, move to B and go to F. So A, B, F. And so this is the angle that I'm actually looking for. Um, so the angle between A, B and F. We need to keep working through lots of different elements here in order to um, find these answers. And so we need to think about all of the different rules we know in terms of parallel uh, of quadrilaterals and triangles and also angles on a straight line around a point and all of those kinds of things. So what I'm going to look at are the different um, the different um, angles that I can work out. Now we have a parallelogram in this case. So one of the rules about parallelograms was that opposite angles are equal. And so here this angle must be 75 degrees as well. So I'm going to write down that angle FAB equals 75 degrees and the reason is that opposite angles in a parallelogram are equal. So that's step one, we've managed to find one angle. Um, within this, we can see here that 35 degrees, well, we have an angle here. This one would be known as a vertically opposite angle and vertically opposite angles are equal as well. So that one would be 35 degrees. So angle AFB equals 35 degrees. And the reason for that because vertically opposite angles are equal. And so the last point is, how do I get the angle which I have marked here, the one that I want to know? Well, we can see from this that we actually have a triangle. And so because we have a triangle, we know that the angles must add up to 180 degrees and so we'll start by adding 75 and 35, gives me 110. And so 110, take that away from 180, leaves me with 70 degrees. And so the angle that we want, so angle A, B, F equals 70 degrees because angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. And so we've got all of the reasons for each step of our working and the final angle. It told us to show that it equals 70 degrees and we've done just that.